Welcome back to Get Wrenched. Well, today we're going to continue on with our Iron 83 mod series. And we're going to do that by getting a little ape. Yep, that's right. We're going to be putting on 16 inch ape hangers. This is something I've wanted to do for a while and I can't wait to see how this one comes out. I finally got all the parts in and now we're going to be putting it all together. So stay tuned, stick around, and don't go anywhere. Okay, so here we are, we're in the garage. We're ready to do the install on the iron and put on these new bars. So we're gonna be going from these little six inch Z bars that I put on a while ago to these 16 inch ape hangers from FMB Choppers. So we're gonna be going from this to this. Now that's a pretty big change. You're going from these little bars to these big ape hangers. And in order to do that, we need to change a lot of things. Putting on these 16 inch bars requires us to change out all the cabling and all the wiring. It's not as simple as when I did these six inch bars where everything was just swappable. On these six inch bars, I didn't have to switch out any of the existing cabling. But on these 16 inch ones, I have to redo everything. So that's where this Burley brand cable line kit comes in handy because it has everything you need to swap the bars out. So it has the throttle cables, the brake line, the clutch cable, and the extended wiring that you'll need to extend your controls. But before we get started, be sure to hit that like, comment, subscribe button below because that always helps YouTube suggest this channel to other people and lets this channel grow. So in order to get started, what we need to do first is remove all the existing cabling and wiring on the bars and take the bars off. So I gotta remove the throttle cables, the clutch line, drain and remove the brake lines, and as well as pull the wiring off the harnesses. So we'll start the disassembly, get everything going, get everything pulled apart, and then we'll start the reassembly process. All right, so let's get going. Man, who would have thought that, you know, just a simple handlebar swap would be so complicated. I mean, this is nothing like when I switched the stock bars to those little six inch Z bars. I mean, I've literally had to take everything off this bike all the way down to the tank and the seat. But it was necessary to get to the wiring harness and everything to do the new controls. So yeah, I got everything laid out on the bench here. It's ready to be put back together. 
I think the first thing I'm gonna do is tackle the wiring harness, get all the wires pulled through the bars and uh, reconnected to the extensions. Once that's done, it's a matter of just getting everything, start putting back together, getting the new clutch line, getting the new brake line, everything else connected. And uh, the reassembly process should be pretty simple. So yeah, you know, I think I've uh, had it for the night. I think I'm gonna pick it back up tomorrow. So, you know, yeah, don't go anywhere. Approximately 10 hours later. All right, so here we are, we're back in the garage it's the next day. And uh, yeah, so there was a little bit of an incident yesterday. And uh, yeah, uh, that happened. That's right, the uh, tank took a nosedive off the bike and hit the ground. You know. Oh, what can I do, you know? Anyways, it's a small dent, not too bad. Um, I think it can be removed with some uh, paintless dent repair. So I'm gonna see if I can try to find somebody to repair the tank. And uh, yeah, this might speed up my plans to get the bike repainted anyways, because uh, I really wanted to do that eventually. So maybe this will just uh, speed the process along so I can get the, you know, the fender, the tank, and the oil cover, and the fenders uh, painted. So yeah, maybe this is a good thing, I don't know. But anyways, it's still rideable, it's not a big deal, it's just a little dent, it's just cosmetic. Um, and it's on the front, so it's gonna be not super noticeable. Anyways, it is what it is. Can't be that upset about it, so you know. Moving on, so let's get back to putting these bars on the bike, because that is keeping it from being rideable right now. And uh, yeah, I wanna get back out on the bike. So let's keep going, let's get the bars on, um, put everything back together. And uh, yeah, it shouldn't take too long. Now it's just the reassembly process. Bike's done, it's kind of got back reassembled. These new 16 inch shape hangers are on and you know, honestly, it wasn't that bad. Other than this little mishap with the tank, which, you know, it's annoying. I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do about it. Whether I'm gonna get it repaired, some painless dent repair or find some replacement tank or whatever. Um, I don't know, we'll see. You know, I gotta weigh what it costs and if it's worth it at the moment. Only things that I would say are annoying about this whole install, you know, was it just adjusting all the lines and, you know, getting these new lines and the brake lines and the throttle cables, it's kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, and the new wiring is kind of, kind of a pain, running the wiring through the bars. But 
Other than that, if you got some patience and some time, you can do it, it's not too bad. One thing I did learn and kind of would recommend is that when I was bleeding the uh, new brake line, I was doing it the way it was kind of recommended, opening the bleeder valve and then you know, squeezing the brake and closing and you know, repeat over and over and over again. And it was working, it was just working very slow. It was taking forever to bleed this really new, big, new line. And uh, it seemed like I was getting some air stuck that just wouldn't budge at all. So I ended up going to uh, local Harbor Freight and picking up um, this little uh, bleeder valve, this little, this little pump kit, vacuum kit. It was only 20 bucks at uh, Harbor Freight, it wasn't very much. And this thing like just made it so simple. It was, it really took three minutes after that, you know. So, you know, if you're gonna do some new brake lines, totally recommend some sort of uh, brake bleeder kit. You can get them off Amazon, you can get them at Harbor Freight. Uh, I'll see if I can put a link below somewhere. The reassembly was pretty simple. Just kind of go in reverse of taking it apart, not a big deal. Get everything torqued to spec, get everything kind of adjusted. Um, just some new adjustments I had to make to it, the mirrors and stuff. But uh, other than that, I think the only other thing is my uh, DinoJet PowerVision monitor here. I don't really like the way it looks mounted on the bars with these bars, so uh, I'm gonna try to figure out some new way to mount this. I think I'm gonna make some sort of custom bracket to mount somewhere off the side of the gas tank. So keep it kind of low and kind of out of the way, and just so I can see it out of my corner of my eye. I'll probably figure out someone I know who can help me weld something together. Um, you know, any, anyone out there want to help me weld a uh, bracket together? Because I would love to learn how to weld. I have no idea how to do it. It'd be a cool skill to have. I got to figure this out. And uh, yeah, the bike's rideable. But uh, there is one more project we got, which is kind of sitting over there. New exhaust just finally came in. I'm going to make another video about that. Uh, I'm not really going to do an install video, more just a like the saga of that uh, exhaust, because that took forever to get. Um, and yeah, I don't really see many sportsters with that particular exhaust. So stay tuned for that. If you've stuck around this long, I appreciate you watching the whole thing. And uh, hopefully this will give you some motivation to do your own installs. But uh, thanks for watching again. Hit that like, comment, subscribe button below. Appreciate all the views and everyone sticking around. So yeah, keep riding, stay safe, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace, everybody.